In this video, we are going to learn some basic dynamic malware analysis and we are going to solve example 1 on Let's Defend Dynamic Malware Analysis Room. So sign up for Let's Defend.io, which is totally free. Go into the Learn tab and open the Dynamic Malware Analysis Room. Here we are going to solve Dynamic Malware Analysis Example 1. By the way, it is totally free to sign up for Let's Defend and solve this room. We are going to analyze two samples. First, we are going to analyze eArchivedDecont.exe sample. So scroll down to the bottom and launch the lab environment. The lab environment is free to use and it has all malware analysis tools already installed. So open the lab in a new tab to maximize it. And we will have our VM in a browser. Open the malware samples folder. And here we have our sample. Now launch process hacker as admin. Scroll down to view latest processes. Similarly, launch Wireshark. Select the interface as Ethernet. Minimize it. Similarly, launch Fiddler. So our networking tools are set. Now launch Blackshot. In the directories, also add C directory so we may be able to analyze all changes in the C drive. Now take the first shot. Now let's launch Pokemon. Run it as administrator. Now everything is set up. Now we need to launch a sample. Go into the samples folder and run the sample as administrator. Let the sample run for a few seconds so that it may be able to perform all the activity that it was designed to do. And here in process hacker, we can see the executed sample. Now stop the capture in Pokemon and take second shot in Rex shot. Similarly stop the capture in Y shot. We have everything that we need. Now go back to Fiddler and let's see what it has found. In the left pane you can see a few HTTP requests that it has captured. And here we have one suspicious request. You could click on it and it will analyze the request. So it is making a request to a DNS URL. Now let's analyze it with Wireshark. So open Wireshark and filter for DNS. And here we can see all DNS requests that have been made. And here we have our malicious request. We can see the full URL. Similarly, we can filter for other type of traffic like SMTP. There is no SMTP traffic. We can look for HTTP traffic. And we do have some HTTP traffic going on. And here we can see a GET request. Now let's move to Pokemon and open the process tree. Here we have our malicious process and we can see that it has created some sub processes. We can see the complete command 
and it is running some power cell. The length of the green bar indicates the complete lifetime of the process. Here we can see some task scheduler as well, which indicates that it uses Windows scheduler for persistent mechanism. We can see the complete command as well. Now right click on the main process and add the process and children to include the filter. Now the logs will be filtered by the process. Now let's see the task which has been added to task scheduler. So open task scheduler. Here we have an entry and we can see its different properties and values. You can go into triggers. It is programmed to run a log on. You can click on action and the default action is to open a file. In prop 1 we can also filter the logs by type. So let's filter out every type of log except network activity. And here we can see some network actions like TCP connect, receive and send. Now enable the registry values. And here we can see all registry activities that are being made including the adding registry key values, removing keys, curing keys etc. A better way to analyze registry values is rec short. We have already captured the first and the second short. So click on compare. And we get the changes made before running the malware and after running the malware. Here we have keys deleted, keys added, files added, folders added, etc. If we analyze the file added, we can single out the file that has been added as persistent mechanism to the file system. So after the analysis, we have found out that the malware copies itself to the app roaming directory. It uses task scheduler to ensure persistence. It creates a scheduled task. It communicates with the command and control server. We have found some domain names. And it is also adding some registry keys. Now let's just analyze the second sample and try to answer the questions that are posed here. First of all, disconnect your lab environment and open a fresh VM. So we are going to analyze law.exe and we have to find out the domain name that it connects to the port it uses, the file it drops in the app data directory and the registry key it changes. So on VM launch process hacker similarly launch by shark start the capture on Ethernet interface Now run Fiddler. Now launch RegShort. Add the root C directory as scan parameter and take the first shot. Extract the law.exe. The password is infected. Now launch prop on. Now we have our dynamic analysis tools running. So let's launch the sample. So right click on the sample and run it as administrator. Let it run for a few seconds so that it may be able to perform all its activities. In the process hacker scroll down and look for the process that you created. And we have our process. Similarly, in Wireshark, we can see some network activity. We can see some SMT traffic, 
Stop the capture. Similarly, stop the log capturing in Pokemon and take the second shot in Rex Shot. So, let's first analyze the network activity. We have seen some SMTP activity. Right click on it and click on Follow TCP Stream. And here we have all SMT activity that is being done. We have the server name. So answer the first question with the server name. Now we need to find out the port. We can see the port number in Wireshark that it is connecting to port 587. Now we need to perform some file and registry analysis. So in RegShort, compare the registry values. In Pokemon, you can open the process tree and add processes and children to the filter. So here we have the log from only the process. So we have the results from RegShort. You can scroll down and see the changes being made to the file system. And here we have the file that is being added to the app data roaming directory. So answer the question on let's defend. Now we need to find out the registry value that is being added. Copy the file name and look for the file name in the complete logs. Here we can single out the registry value that is being modified. We can also do it in Pokemon. So enable only registry logs. So enable a custom filter and add the filter as operation is create file. And here we can see all files that are being created and we need to find the file that is being created in the app data roaming directory. Now clear out this filter, enable registry logs and look for the registry entry that is being made. And here we have the entry. You can right click on it, go into the properties and you can see the full path. So on let's defend answer the question. So we have successfully analyzed both the samples in example 1 of dynamic malware analysis room on Let's Defend. And we have seen some basic dynamic malware analysis tools and how to use them. I hope you like this video and see you in the next video.